Good morning, Santa Clarita. Welcome in. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead school's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. For those of you that know, and those of you that don't know, our show, Eye on the Valley, is brought to you by SCVI and I lead schools. We are a network of charter schools with campuses in Castaic, Agua Dulce, Lancaster. We've even got a fully accredited online school that is K through 12 online, different from homeschool. You've got online teachers that work with your kids. You even get coaches, free tutoring. That's different from homeschool because we do have a burgeoning homeschool program called iLead Exploration. For information on any of our schools, whether they are classroom based or virtual, visit us at iLeadSchools.org for more information. So we've got our eyes on education in Santa Clarita and across the nation, but like our show says, we keep our eye on the valley as well bringing you everything that you need to know about what's what here in the Valley. And we do it all while we have a little bit of fun. We enjoy slapping around and having a good time, getting into a little bit of trouble, trying to get out of trouble again. So it's all good. You know, what would life be without a little bit of fun in games? So, uh, so yeah, we, we try to put on a fun show and also keep you updated as to what's going on in education and in the Valley. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. We've got a terrific show for you today. Um, Coming up in just a moment, we'll have Dr. Amine Movsisian from I Lead Agua Dulce. She joined the Agua Dulce team recently to help open our high school there. And they just launched their ninth grade. And, you know, I'm hearing good things. So, uh, So, yeah, we'll talk to Amine in just a couple of minutes. Later on today, we'll talk to Cheryl Jones. Actually, not Cheryl Jones. We're going to be talking to Leah Parker, her partner. Uh, We'll speak to Leah Parker. She is from the Child and Family Center here in Santa Clarita. You know, they do such amazing work at the Child and Family Center, and they've got a fun event coming up that you'll want to hear about, might want to register for. So uh, we'll talk to Leah in uh, in just a little bit. And then, of course, as always, we'll close the show with a little bit of goofing off, some fun, some trivia with Big T. And, And if I'm not mistaken, I think... We're going to have a very special guest join us for Big T's portion of the show today. You know, uh, he was talking a little smack after last week's show. So uh, Patty and I threw down the gauntlet and and this guy picked it right up. So stay tuned to see who it is. And uh, more importantly, will he be able to withstand my brilliance with general knowledge and and Patty's vast understanding of, well, gaming and Disney films? Indeed. So, I, even even I don't know who, who this person is. I'm really um, intrigued now. Well, then uh, y- your memory's failing you. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, we've got a we've got a guest coming in to join us for Big T section. That'll be at the at the close of the show. But uh, stick around. If you're on the KHTS Radio face, uh, uh, Facebook live feed, drop us a little note. Let us know you're here. Say hey. Maybe even pop in a question for one of our guests if you feel so inclined. Or you can always stay tuned into the stream on hometownstation.com. You know, 24 hours a day, you can listen into the station right there on the website, hometownstation.com. You can also download the KHTS radio app on your phone, or you can kick it old school and listen to the radio, 98.1 FM or 1220 AM. Or if you like to do like I do when when you're at home, just ask Alexa to play KHTS and and, and she'll dial it right up for you. It's going to be a great show. Grab yourself a cup of coffee Settle in. Let's go ahead and get started. Let's kick off your Friday on this short week for you. My first guest today is Dr. Armine Movsisian from Ailid Agua Dulce. Dr. Movsisian, a, a longtime educator and learner, is excited to join the Ailid Agua Dulce team. Having immigrated from Armenia at a young age, she experienced firsthand the challenges that students face and the lack of preparation in schools for the real world. These realities rooted a deep interest in the realm of education for her and and how people interact and learn, which led to her journey in the field of education. So Armine earned her doctorate of education in educational leadership from the University of Southern California and received leadership training from Harvard's Graduate School of Education at UCLA and UC Berkeley. Prior to her doctorate, she earned both her bachelor's and master's degree in history and global cultures from UC Irvine. Upon graduation, she began her career as a history and social science teacher, and I believe that there's a special place in heaven for history and social science teachers. 
Anyway, she started in Santa Ana and the San Gabriel Valley. With each passing year, though, Armine took on more and more leadership responsibilities and worked closely with fellow teachers, parents, staff, and students to promote not only academic excellence, but innovation and teamwork within the school community that she worked in. During that time, she served in both the public and private spheres in a variety of roles, including head of school, principal, academic director, and director of curriculum and instruction. And now, like I said, we are so blessed to have her at Ailida Wadolse heading up the high school team. Armina, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Good morning. I'm so blessed to be here. Oh, we're glad to have you. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. I know your your high schoolers are chomping at the bit for another day with you, but uh, but we are fortunate to spend a little time with you here this morning. Let's start with with you and and your journey a little bit. I mentioned uh, your amazing resume and, and your background in the field of education, but uh, but how did you find us at iLead? Well, it, it's interesting because a handful of years ago, a friend of mine sent me some information about iLead, uh, iLead, and wrote, "You belong here." <laughs> and it really intrigued me. I was like, what do you mean I belong here? So I started reading more about, you know, I lead. And eventually I got in touch with Daniela. And next thing I know, I was at a leadership cafe. <laughs> uh, so I got to know the team members. And uh, there was an exciting opportunity to uh, join in, in San Fernando. But that didn't end up working out. Oh. Um, and so at that point, there was a bit of a pause. Okay. And a few years later, you know, uh, life brought me back to I lead, and it's kind of like that moment where you don't know exactly how the dots of life connect, but looking back, you're like, ah, oh, this is how and why it happened this way. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, our, I feel our, very, very blessed to be here. Oh, we're, we are so glad to have you. Um, so you talked about Daniela. She's one of our uh, uh, amazing staff members in human resources and has been with our organization since almost day one. Um, and uh, yeah, you, you mentioned Leadership Cafe. That's uh, one of the ways that we, well, I don't like to say interview potential leaders. It, it's almost a way that potential leaders interview us and it's almost a full day experience and and at the end of the day, um, you know, you kind of end up deciding whether or not we're a match for you. And, and like your friend said, um, I, I would agree with that person wholeheartedly that, uh, that you are a, a perfect philosophical match for our organization. Sorry it took so long, but so excited that we, uh, we have you now. So in the end, it all worked out well, uh, and we are lucky enough at iLead to find you again and have you as, well, what we call a leadership resident um, at Eilid Aguadolce. Um, so can you talk to us a, a little bit about that? I know at each school we, we have leadership residents, and that role, it, it kind of rolls out a little bit differently depending on the school and the individual. So why don't you describe a little bit what your role is at Eilid Aguadolce? I will. I will. And I think before that, I want to bridge uh, from the previous section. Um, I went on this Baja adventure with my partner, Chris, over the summer. Uh -huh. And you know when you ask, like, the world for a sign and, like, it appears? Uh -huh. I was walking the streets of Loreto, and I looked up, and the first sign I saw said Agua Dulce. Uh -huh. So uh, it, was, <laughs> it was like a sign from the universe. So I, I'm here at Agua Dulce, and I'm with a, an amazing group of people with the leadership of Lisa Latimer, and you walk on the campus and there's this exciting energy and it's full of caring people and individuals who are just full of love. So I love the energy here and I love being here. As far as being a leadership resident, um, what I'm understanding in my day-to-day -day as I get to learn more about what this means is, you know, I show up and I do what's best for kids. Um, and to elaborate a bit, I think of it as cultivating uh, our environment and specifically a place where learners get to discover their elements, gain an understanding of their truth, and acquire the skills and knowledge, knowledge they need, the habits of mind they will need to navigate their life's journey. You know, um, I think it's important to, to think about the things that are, like, not tangible how you create an environment when people walk in and it's just, you don't know why, you can't quite pinpoint why, but you're like, something feels good about this atmosphere and I just want to be here, <laughs> you know? You're absolutely right. And it's funny because that, 
that feeling that sort of intangible exists on each one of our campuses, but it's different at each one of our campuses. Uh, that that something exciting, something different, something attractive, I'm not sure what it is until you dig really deep. But I want to go back to the way you described uh, uh your job duties, I wish we could include those two bullet points in every one of our employees' job descriptions. Number one, show up. Number two, do what's best for kids. And number three, we'll figure itself out. So I, I think that's that's beautiful. Um, so it's it's been, you've been with us, well, gosh, it's been probably a couple of months now because we do do a lot of work in the summer. Uh, kind of front loading mm-hmm. and getting the school year ready, but then the kids have been back for what is it, two, three weeks now. So, Armine, tell us how's it going? How are you liking uh, your work at iLead? I love iLead. I Aww. I want to start with the learners. Uh, they, oh my gosh, they show up every day and their eyes are just shining and they're excited to to just uh, know more and. Uh, build their high school experience. So they they are such a boost on a daily basis. They bring so much joy to my life here um, and everyone around us. I think I would describe people that I lead as a supportive family, mm-hmm. you know, of professionals who are there to show up for you. Like you, you need something, you need support, you have a wonder, you have a question, you can tap into, you know, the makers. And there's this this whole network of people who are there to cheer you on, support, and provide whatever is needed to, uh, you know, do what's best for kids. So yeah. that's been a major, a major um, um, point of gratitude for me to know that there's so many people to reach out to. And, I mean, I don't want to start listing names because uh, there, there are so <laughs> many people and I wouldn't want to leave anyone out. But, I, you know, if I'm going to stay with makers and a larger network, everyone knows who they are. <laughs> They show up on the weekly. We have weekly uh, meetings for the update in the high school and what's going on from uh, and the support from humanities and science and math and overall program um, um, uh, development. So it's been it's just been beautiful to see this large network of people who really care and show up wholeheartedly um, with their full hearts. You know. And for my listeners who uh, who don't know, the makers, that's our, our team of curriculum and instruction specialists, and they are, are constantly on campus and, and also virtually meeting with our instructors, our teachers, uh, daily, weekly, to make sure that they have all the support that they need. So I'm glad to hear that, that you're feeling that support, Armini. Now, I do worry that someone might be out there listening and thinking, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know about that. You talked about high schoolers showing up just excited and, and ready to learn and ready to work. And I know some folks out there are thinking, uh-uh, I've got a high schooler. That's not how they go to school in the morning. But it's different, right? When you take the education mm-hmm. and put it in the hands of kids, it empowers them. And, and they do have this sense of purpose. So let's talk about that uh, because I know that's been a huge goal for you as we launch our high school so this year, Ailid Aguadolce has expanded. We were uh, K through five our first year, and then we expanded to open a middle school. Uh, and this year, we're now expanding, and we've got our first class of high school age learners. So what are some of the differences between maybe a more traditional high school that you've got plenty of experience in and the Ailid Aguadolce high school experience? How do those, mm-hmm. how do those differ? Well, you walk onto campus and uh, what it sounds like, looks like, and feel like is that you're home. You know, it's fun. There are people who are caring all around you and they're uh, ready to be there for you. As far as how it's uh, different in the traditional sense of the world, I think the traditional high school is very prescriptive. Okay. You enter school there's a set of things you need to do a checklist and get done. And uh, that's about it. You, you're not quite the owner of your journey. And I think what happens in, in I lead and um, uh, what we're creating here is to give the wheel to the learner where they are the ones that are in charge of their journey. And we give them those skills needed to get there uh, through our advisory, you know, talking about the eight habits, and starting to build this toolbox for our learners to have more autonomy, to um, build their account- accountability, 
to get metacognitive and um, be the person who's leading their life versus being told what to do. So very learner-centered, and I would say learner-centered innovation, uh, a place where learners get to embrace curiosity, a sense of wonder, and uh, uh, be creative, be producers in society and not be just passive consumers. So if you're still struggling to uh, to believe that what Armin is describing here is really real, I will want to invite you to do two things. First of all, you can check us out at org, and you can set up a time to take a virtual tour. Um, I believe soon we'll be setting up physical tours for you to tour the campus. Uh, but you can check out our website at org, And we're going to talk specifics when we come back with Dr. Armini Movsisian about how they take the education and put it in the learner's hands and allow them to build their own educational experience. Again, we're with Dr. Armini Movsisian, part of the leadership team that's building the high school program at Ailid Agua Dulce. We'll talk more about some of the exciting things that they've already got going on when we get back right after this. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. You're listening to your hometown station, KHTS. Loss of hearing can affect the quality of life. Santa Clarita Hearing Center can help. They specialize in both preventative hearing loss and corrective measures, including diagnostic tests, new technology hearing aids, cochlear implants, hearing protection, and tinnitus treatment. They can adjust your current hearing aids or fit you for new ones. Santa Clarita Hearing Center also offers sleep molds, swim molds, and musician monitors. Book an appointment today. Log on to SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Located on McBean Parkway next to the hospital. That's SantaClaritaHearingCenter.com. Summer is here. Try the new Charlie Ice Cold Drink, named after social media megastar dancer Charlie D'Amelio. Charlie's go-to coffee order is a Dunkin' Cold Brew with whole milk and three pumps of caramel swirl. It's officially on Dunkin's menu nationwide as the Charlie. You'll love it. Dunkin' also has new all-day sandwiches and new donut varieties. Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bouquet Canyon in the Lowe Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country. Both with curbside pickup, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Postmates. Or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on Duncan. Join the Guardians SCV and KHTS Radio to remember those who lost their lives on 9-11. This 20-year anniversary remembrance event will take place at Higher Vision Church on the Old Road in Valencia starting on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. For more information, visit guardianscv.org. You already know Salt Creek Grill has the best food in our valley. Well, now you can have Salt Creek's gourmet meals catered to your event. I'm Greg Amsler, owner of Salt Creek Grill. I'd like to introduce you to a new level of catering, featuring our catering director, Tamara Levine. Salt Creek Grill creates memorable experiences, which leaves our clients and guests with a sense of awe and excitement. From menu development to picturesque presentation, you'll enjoy culinary excellence and creative catering. Salt Creek Grill, a new level of catering. Excellence isn't just a word, it is what we deliver. Vanguard Protection Group is committed to providing its clients with the highest echelon of protective services available. Our clients not only receive the security services they contract for, but also reports that are well-written, articulate, and thorough. Our patrol officers operate at the highest levels and have an impressive rapport with local law enforcement. With military, police, private policing, and courtroom experience, you can trust that we have the strength to deliver our promise of excellence. Contact Vanguard Protection by calling 661-753-3611 or visiting their website at vanguardprotectiongroup.com. Santa Clara business owners may be entitled to new stimulus money that is outside PPP assistance and SBA loans. If you own a business, you may qualify for additional stimulus money. Hundreds of Santa Clara businesses are receiving hundreds of thousands of dollars from the American Rescue Plan. For details on how you can qualify, visit hometownstation.com forward slash stimulus. That's hometownstation.com forward slash stimulus. Hometownstation.com forward slash stimulus. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 on the AM side. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, I on the Valley. 
We're talking this morning with Dr. Amine Movsesian. Amine is a key part of the leadership team that's building the high school program at Ailid Agua Dulce. They're starting this year with ninth grade and will grow one grade at a time from there. Armine, before the break, you were telling us about how you and your team are developing a rather unique high school experience for your learners. And actually, the way I even say that doesn't feel right coming out of my mouth because it's not you guys that are doing all the building. In creating this experience, you've given your learners quite a, a voice. So can you share a little bit about what that looks like? What are some of the ways that uh, the learners are helping to create their own high school experience rather than having a high school built around them. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely, absolutely. What I'll do is uh, I'll start, I'm going to lead with our driving question and then share some things of what we've been doing day to day and how that informed the, you know, what our schedule looks like. Okay, uh, so a driving question is, right, exactly. Our, our, our schools are project-based and, and with project-based learning, you always start with a, a a driving question, which is that overarching question. It's this huge, ethereal, big, big uh, picture question that uh, the kids have to answer, and that's what drives the learning. And so, Armina, what is that driving question, and, and then how does that put the education in the hands of your high schoolers? The driving question is, how can I use my high school experience so that I can show up in life and community now oh. and after high school? Well, that is quite a question. That, <laughs> yeah, right, and and that's something that uh, that in an ideal world, um, learners would be asking themselves every day for their four years in high school, right? How mm -hmm. can I use this to to show up in in life and for myself? That is great. So, what does that look like uh, on the daily? How is it that that you're handing that uh, that is it power, autonomy? How are you handling that or handing that off to your kids? How are they building their high school? Well, we came up with the different products that we have to see and build in order to answer the question. I see. So starting with the portfolio, this is going to be portfolio entry number one, right? Okay. And the portfolio is the beginning of their resume. No matter what mm -hmm. you know path they decide to take, uh, they're going to have a portfolio of the work they've done, you know, not only just grades that represent, you know, there are numbers and grades that show learning, but we're talking about building a portfolio of work of uh, what they have done in their high school career and how they can utilize that in their uh, life, whether they want to apply to internships, summer programs. Uh, they're going to have a nice uh, track record of everything they've shown up with in high school. So first, we talked about there's this portfolio you need to have. Then uh, tangible things, we're looking at the high school environment. What does it look like inside and outside? And we'll be taking now and then photos to kind of track its development. <laughs> like it. um, we're looking at a timeline of when we're doing what and how we're going to make it come to fruition. We've explored experiences, traditions, and milestones that are going to be important in their 9th through 12th. Um, uh, and that includes uh, things like in 12th grade, doing a, 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 a rejection letter bonfire so let's say we, ha we apply to different colleges and jobs. The way you get to come to this uh, senior bonfire is that you've got to bring a rejection letter with you. And that way we celebrate growth mindset and learning how to uh, work with this, the big word failure and, uh, you know, the life habits that are associated with that. So they've been building what they want those four years to look like, what we do each year as a part of our traditions. We have been doing a hit record project where every week each learner does the grows and glows, you know, uh, where are we, what are things that they shined in and are proud of and what are ways they have grown that week. And they oh, do cool. a, a project process update where they are, what they've researched, where they want to go. Um, we're also uh, debating doing a time capsule lip dub uh, to uh, contribute to the uh, entire school and we'll have all the different grade levels involved in creating, you know, who we are as uh, I lead Agua Dulce. So that's something we're still talking about. They want to do letters to the future seniors starting from the class of 2026 going to 2038 and a letter to themselves when they are seniors. And we're also thinking about having a founder wall because each of our ninth graders, they are the founders of this high school. So having a wall that tells their story. 
Um, and so these are the different elements that they came up with to answer the question. And we've been doing a lot of ideations. Uh, another one we did was, uh, what is the ideal graduate look like of ILEAD Agua Dulce High School? Okay. So the words they came up with to describe what the graduate, you know, who they want to become by the time they graduate and how they want to be described are ambitious, responsible, a person with integrity, mm. proactive, mature, outgoing, smart, and fantabulous. <laughs> uh, I'm looking at the wall because we did this ideation on the big post-it, so I'm looking straight at it. And uh, uh, it, it really, these are their words. They ideated into, you know, uh, duos and trios, so they came up with these descriptors. I had no uh, involvement in these words, so it was really <laughs> exciting to see uh, who they thought they want to be by the time they graduate. I love that. What a beautiful profile of a, of a high school graduate. Um, and, and, you know, you mentioned that bonfire of rejection letters. I, I want you to make sure that you let me know when you guys have that because I've, I've got one from Cal Poly that needs to be deposited. Anyways. Absolutely. <laughs> so um, let's talk about, uh, you know, kind of the, the nitty-gritty, the, the nuts and bolts. What does it look like? What is, uh, what is the typical day or maybe week in the life of an Agua Dulce ninth grader look like on campus? All right. So uh, let's talk about a typical week. Okay. I'll start out with uh, the morning. In the morning, we do our uh, meetings. Uh, it's our advisory program. On Mondays, we do Meta Monday, uh, Mondays, which is like <laughs> getting metacognitive. Oh, okay. I, I love meet it. with every learner. I meet with every learner. We talk about their learning styles. You know, we reflect on the learner inventory. Uh, we discuss where they are in their projects, what their goals are, things that they are passionate about, um, what they're interested in. And those are going to be helpful elements to me to help support them on a weekly basis and make sure that nothing falls through the cracks, you know, and that we're uh, building that autonomous structure and they're taking ownership of it. And at the same time, it's going to... Uh, um, serve as a space for the learners to get to know themselves through conversations with me. And then Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, we do all other kinds of support and advisory activities from health and wellness to talking about uh, important life skills. Uh, learners express that they want to learn about taxes. So we're going to mm. spend some time talking about, you know, what that means in their lives and, and, and for them to be prepared for that part of the real world. Uh, we talk about the top 10 skills from the World Economic Forum, uh, share TED Talks that are relevant and, and inspire us. We do team building. So that's Tuesday to Thursday. Um, after we do advisory program, uh, we get into our first workshop of the day. And our workshops are designed in interdisciplinary format. So you have your humanities, you have um, uh, STEM, you have visual performing arts. And what we do is we spend approximately four hours on each of those a week. Um, uh, so one day it might be where we do uh, visual performing arts and science. The next day is humanities and math and science and visual performing arts, humanities um, and uh, science. And we look for places of how, um, how concepts and ideas intersect and how these disciplines are connected to each other uh, to get a better sense of, of life you know, and how things are done. After we do those two workshops, uh, we get into the world language component and everyone's studying Spanish online. Oh, and at the end of the day, we do very, uh, two very important things as a part of our routine. Um, there's a set of uh, 30 minutes where we have production, teaming, or elements. Mm -hmm. So this is where either they're working on what they're producing, they're doing their, um, um, they're working in the studio, Teaming is they have, they have to collaborate with a group of people that they're working on a part of a project with. That's where they get to collaborate and make connections. Or elements, this, uh, they're working on their uh, individual elements, discovering things they're passionate about, engaging in things like genius hours and, and working on mm -hmm. passion projects. At the end of the day, here's how we bring it all together. We do check-ins, feedback, and reflection. Mm -hmm. um, we ask, like, how did today go? Uh, how, you know, what went well and what could be better. So we're uh, engaging in this uh, daily reflective practice uh, to bring in more information and, and uh, sculpt uh, uh, the daily experience. On Fridays, learners have a choice day. They can uh, um, 
they can come to school or work from home as a part of our independent study program. And there they're able to do things like their physical education, which we track, uh, mathematics, science, visual performing arts, Spanish, work on their portfolio, uh, make sure that they've uh, completed their assignments to the standards in which they set for themselves. I have a few learners walking in now as we speak, so it's nice to see their faces on this Friday morning. Um, and then what happens in the afternoon is we go into our professional learning with, um, you know, the, the maker team and the larger uh, network of uh, I lead, and we also do site-based training for professionals, so professional learning for our facilitators and team. Okay, so a couple of reflections on that. Um, first of all, oh my goodness, your kids are busy. Uh, second, <laughs> I, I love the cycle, right? I, I just love the, the week long cycle, um, and how you take the kids through the entire learning cycle. And I'm speaking specifically about the amazing level of reflection and metacognition, right? The, the whole idea about thinking about thinking and, and, and how did you do and, and how can you grow and how can you be better and, all that stuff, that's that's when true learning takes place. It's not during the experience. It's as you're going and you're thinking about it. And, and when you're done, you're, you're reflecting back on it. Uh, it's, oh gosh, so amazing, so exciting. Now, I know that Eilid, and uh, specifically Eilid Agua Dulce, um, is known for some of its unique physical spaces. And, and, and you guys certainly aren't being left behind in the high school there. Can you tell us about some of the unique spaces that Eilid Agua Dulce has to offer? Uh, indeed. Uh, so we, we have a lot of land. It's a pretty big space. Um, we uh, care a lot about bringing uh, nature onto campus as well. Mm -hmm. So there have been conversations of, uh, you know, thinking about how we can um, have a beehive. We already have a few little piglets, uh, uh, chickens, uh, bunnies, um, and I'm told that there's a family who's going to bring us some goats. So we're looking at agribusiness, <laughs> agriculture, nice. and the high school has uh, uh, kind of three kind of pathways that learners can choose to go on by, uh, you know, as we explore life choices in ninth grade. Getting into 10th grade, we have a CTE track for business development. So this is a really beautiful opportunity to talk about agribusiness and what that looks like. Yeah. Um, uh, we have the international baccalaureate uh, uh, pathway, and then we have our college uh, preparatory. So depending on, you know, what their skill base is, what they're passionate about, uh, we'll be advising them to explore, to get more experience and exposure in these things and utilize the space that we have, uh, very big campus and the, the gardens and everything uh, to uh, explore their interests. Yeah, if you haven't seen the campus at Eilid Agua Dulce, yes, it is huge. It's beautiful when kids, whether they're five years old or 15, walk onto campus, their eyes just absolutely light up. It's it's gorgeous. Uh, again, you've got to visit our campus. Check us out at EileedAguadulce.org. Um, and you're right. I'm excited about the goats. I met Petunia the pig over the summer, and she and I absolutely fell in <laughs> love e with each other. Um, so it, it's just really an amazing feeling there on your campus. We talked about that project that you're working on, that, that kids are curating their own high school experience. And I know that you've already built in some pretty interesting activities to, to help them along with that project. Can you, can you share a, a couple more? Indeed. Uh Sorry for uh, that's okay. You've got kids showing in, up, so and I'm, I'm right there with you, uh, right here with you. Uh, yeah, we've done different kind of exercises in the class, so learners are exploring who they are. They're going to be mm -hmm. um, uh, figuring out how they want to tell their life story, I love that. and then we're going to use that to study uh, social science backwards. Um, uh, so instead of going back to 1750 and starting from there, <laughs> we're going to start with, we did this exercise where they, we, they listed what is important to them individually, uh -huh. locally, and globally. And we use that to inform our class list of what's important to us. And so you, we look, I'm looking at the list and it's like social justice, equality, equity, uh, food, um, uh, uh, um, skills and knowledge. So we're going to take that and we're going to uh, put it in our framework to understand the social sciences. 
um, uh, in our humanities program. So that my story is going to be very exciting because that helps us tap into where the family story, the ancestor story. How did we all come to be here in this room and bring all the stories? It's that cultural responsive aspect of things yeah. where we bring our stories to the room and understand each other and use that to understand humanity and the change uh, of uh, things over time, right? So, uh, we've also, yeah, we talked about the ideal graduate mm -hmm. um, and the traditions and my milestones. Uh, we've talked a lot about the curriculum and things they want to experience. So learners uh, have expressed their, that, that they do want, want to do some uh, traditional things like um, having a mock trial or model UN. And at the same time, uh, they've told me about how they want to think about gardening in the space program and, you know, what kind of seeds exist and how we can use our campus to um, uh a grow garden. Oh, very cool. So and send things into space. <laughs> well, yeah, and send things into space. <laughs> In fact, you guys had a couple of learners that, uh, that sent a project into space uh, just a few weeks back, a project that they worked Indeed. on yeah, all last year during 7th uh, and 8th grade. Um, and their, the experiment that they designed, wrote the specifications for, was actually performed by scientists on the International Space Station. And from what I understand... Um, it's on its way back where they're going to do post-flight analysis here really soon. Exactly. I mean, and then, well, a few of the learners are in this room, and so oh. <laughs> they want to think about what the next step looks like. Oh, wow. So we're, we're talking about taxonomy um, to see what the possibilities are. I love that. So the, it's not that the project's over. It's now moving beyond that that original project. I see what you mean by really – truly generating a learner-centered, a student-centered environment. You know, it's funny, pretty much every school out there says, yes, we're student-centered, um, but that doesn't mean that we just put the kid in the middle, right? You're, you're truly <laughs> designing the educational experience and the ultimate outcome around the kids. This is so exciting. So I, I can imagine that a lot of our listeners listening are thinking, you know, if this, if this really is everything that she's saying it is, which... It is, friends. Check us out on the website. Go visit our campus. They're going to want to enroll. So how can learners mm -hmm. uh, or, or families enroll their learners at Eilid Agua Dulce? I, they will go to our website, Agua Dulce, uh, and the enroll button is right there. And they're also welcome to call us, and we'll give them a tour, and uh, we can have a conversation. Um, and it's an online process at this, at this point. Okay, yeah, still. Yeah, our office, you, Gladys will uh, completely support in the process of how to enroll, and I'll be here to give tours. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever works for the families, whether they want to be, you know, go through the online system or want to meet us first, uh, both are possible. Absolutely. So, again, that's org. Click on Enroll Now. You'll love Gladys. You'll love the entire team at Eilid Agua Dulce. Uh, and just for those of you that don't know, a charter school is a public school, so there's no tuition involved. Anyone can enroll. We don't have the same borders that the traditional district does. Anybody that lives in L.A. County or an adjacent county can enroll. So we, we take families at Ailey Agua Dulce from Palmdale, the Antelope Valley area, from Silmar and the North San Fernando Valley area, from the Santa Clarita area, and then, of course, right there in the, in the beautiful town of Agua Dulce and, and adjacent Acton as well. So pretty much, if you can hear my voice, you can enroll. Check it out at ileadaguadulce.org. Armina, it sounds like a really exciting high school program. I look forward to talking to you again as the program grow, grows. Thank you so much for joining us. Likewise, Matt. I, uh, can I add one more thing? Absolutely. We have time for yeah. addition. Um, uh, first and foremost, it's been a pleasure to be here. Thank you for being such a wonderful host and Aww. creating this space that's so comfortable to speak in. I love your energy, you know. Um, uh, so thank you for, for guiding us in that process. I very much appreciate you and the whole team there. You're wonderful. Oh, go um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I will. I could. Please. Um, uh, <laughs> no, really, you bring this sense uh. of humor and, and light into the room anytime, whether it's online, you know, phone or in person. You br really bring a lot of um, joy into a room when you're in it. You're too so sweet. Thank you for that. I appreciate and, it. Uh, I also wanted to mention to our families, I know there are going to be families who wonder, well, what about A2Gs or what about standards? How does it factor right. in? Yeah. I, I want to make sure I clarify that 
we look at uh, standards or what we call learning targets. Mm-hmm. We utilize, uh, you know, all the common cores, the NGSS, the AP, whatever is applicable to all the disciplines. Okay. And then we take that as a foundation. So think about like the blueprint and, and the beams that you need in the foundation. What we do differently is how we think about education, the mm. methods, the daily experiences. Um, so I want to make sure I clarify that, you know, everything we do has those learning targets or what the, you know, greater community calls standards. Um, and we call them learning targets because mm-hmm. that way we understand what it means. It's more uh, clear on what the words are. Uh, I really want to communicate that that's the pl- blueprint, it's the foundation, and how we go about it is the PBL and SEL. So project-based learning, socio-emotional learning are the heart and the soul of the program and how we approach uh, the concept of learning and innovation. That, that's a great point. I'm glad you pointed it out. It's not just the touchy-feely, well-rounded human mm-hmm. being stuff, but it's also the academic rigor. We really appreciate it. Again, Armine, yeah, thank you so much for your time. We, we appreciate you and everything you're doing. We do have to take a quick commercial break, but you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. Coming up, there's a DUI of historical note that I want to talk to you guys about. I'm Matt Watson. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. Duncan is hiring. With two Santa Clarita locations, one in Saugus on Bouquet Canyon and another on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country, it's the perfect way to start your career. With competitive pay and significant benefits, you can become an essential part of the Duncan team. Work in a fun environment here in your hometown. Your career starts at Duncan. Apply at DuncanDonuts.com. That's DuncanDonuts.com. Santa Clarita now has its first comprehensive outpatient rehab facility. Renew Med's multidisciplinary team includes physicians, respiratory, physical, and occupational therapists, as well as social service professionals to provide superior therapy and customized treatment. Whether you've got COPD, COVID complications, or are keen on preventing a fall, they can assess your challenges and help you feel better. Renew Med on Lyons Avenue, just north of the five. Visit RenewMedSCV.com. That's RenewMedSCV.com. Gavin Newsom is the most arrogant governor the state has ever seen. He's imposed some of the most restricted COVID mandates than any other state in the country, and yet California is no safer than any other state. I'm Eric Hallaby, owner of Total Financial Solutions. We've been assisting Southern California residents with their financial goals for over 25 years. Under Newsom, my friends, neighbors have lost their jobs and their businesses. Our kids have lost a full year of in-school education and will now be forced to wear uncomfortable, restrictive masks. This is all in defiance to the very science Newsom and his cohorts pledged to follow. COVID restrictions, a spike in crime, and a homeless crisis are all blamed on Newsom's policies. More than 1,900 people a day have left the state of California. Enough is enough. It's time for a change. On September 14th, I urge you to vote to recall Governor Gavin Newsom. We support replacing him with Larry Elder, not a politician, but a leader with sensible solutions. So let's fix California. Vote for Larry Elder. Visit electelder.com. That's electelder.com. Paid for by Total Financial Solutions. Experience Frontier Toyota's all-new hot and exciting Toyota lineup. Serving the Santa Clarita Valley for over 30 years. Frontier Toyota, the Camry, Corolla, and Prius Kings. They're tops in Tacoma and Tundra trucks. Frontier Toyota, the new way of car buying. Shop from home at FrontierToyota.com or visit their showroom at Valencia and Creekside. Discover a whole new car buying experience with your friends at Frontier Toyota. Hello, I'm Mike Lindell, and I'm excited to announce my new product, My Slippers. They took me over two years to develop because I didn't want just an ordinary slipper. My Slippers are meant to be worn all day long, no matter what you're doing, whether you're inside or outside. My Slippers come with an exclusive three-tier cushioning system that you won't find in any other slipper. It combines two layers of foam, including my proprietary My Pillow foam and a patented impact gel made from U.S. soybeans. My three-tier cushioning system is going to help relieve pressure points, provide that micro support you need for all day comfort and help prevent fatigue. Not only that, my slippers are made with high quality leather and a premium indoor outdoor sole that make them extremely durable. I personally guarantee they're going to be the most comfortable slippers you'll ever own. Go to mypillow.com to receive 40% off the my slippers when you use the promo code KHTS or call 1 800 973 3927 and make sure to use the promo code KHTS. It's time to enhance your natural beauty and well-being at Hestia Medical Spa. Hestia Medical Spa offers laser treatments for skin resurfacing, hair removal, and tattoo removal. 
Hestia Medical Spa uses high quality laser machines, including Soprano Ice, which is painless and can be used for all skin types. Laser treatments have been on the rise in today's beauty industry. Experience rejuvenation at Hestia Medical Spa, located on Valencia Boulevard next to City Hall. Call 753-3434 or online at HestiaMedicalSpa.com. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley. And let's take a look at this day in history. Today is Friday, September 10th, 2021. And as I mentioned before the break, on September 10th, 1897, the first drunk driving arrest was conducted. And no, the perpetrator was not American. 25-year-old London taxi driver George Smith became the first person ever arrested for drunk driving after he drove his cab into the broadside of a building. Smith later pleaded guilty and was fined 25 shillings. It is Friday, friends. Be safe. Call an Uber if necessary. You don't need that in your life. On September 10th, 1953, Swanson began selling its first TV dinners. In fact, to celebrate, today has been declared National TV Dinner Day. So if you haven't made plans for dinner yet, pick up a couple of TV dinners on the way home. And if you prefer to cook at home, just make sure that the Salisbury steak is still partially frozen at the center and that the lava cake burns the taste buds completely off of your kids' mouths. And... On this date, in 1953, uh, psychiatrist Lucy from the Peanuts actually upped her fees from five cents to 47 cents. So, inflation. We are out. This is Matt Watson on your hometown station, KHTS. If you'd like to take your business up a notch, take a look at Elite Magazine. Linda and Mo Hafizi, owners of our Valley's two leading magazines, the Magazine of Santa Clarita and Elite. I'm so proud of Elite. It allows your advertisement to stand out. We distribute Elite to 50,000 homes and businesses. You'll find us in 1,900 local hotel rooms. Discover how Elite Magazine can help your business. Call 294 294- 4444. Superior quality is second nature to us. Just ask our advertisers. When you think about your next place, maybe even your forever place, are you hearing more of this and less of this? Introducing Five Point Valencia, a vibrant new community coming to the Santa Clarita Valley, a place with parks, trails, and fresh architecture, all tuned to the way people want to live today. New homes for all, with prices to match, from the low 400,000s to over a million. Learn more at... Why did Mercedes-Benz of Valencia win the Dealer of Excellence Award in 2019? Because we strive to provide the most outstanding sales experience. Mercedes-Benz of Valencia COO, Chris Paz. We know you have high expectations. Our stellar team will meet and exceed your expectations. That's why we were named Mercedes Best of the Best, placing us in the top 10% of all Mercedes dealers nationwide. Find out how you can lease a new Mercedes for unbelievably low monthly payments. Details at mbzvalencia.com. Moms, dads, this is Cardin Ellis, owner of Unipest. If your house has ants, spiders, or gophers, or you want a free orange oil termite inspection, you have to call Unipest Termite and Pest Control, Santa Clarita's only factory certified orange oil pest control company. We specialize in organic, low impact, and traditional pest control options that are all kid friendly, pet friendly, and affordable with no contracts, and we're SCV owned and operated. Call us at 661 BUG 7575 or visit unipest.com. KHTS AM 1220 and 98.1 FM Santa Clarita. It's 9 o'clock. Time for... President Biden doubles down on Lisa Brady. Fox News. He is standing by the new vaccine mandates announced yesterday, accusing some governors, Republicans in particular, of being cavalier with the health of their communities for opposing mandates. This is he and the First Lady were visiting a Washington, D.C. classroom this morning. Fox's Rachel Sutherland has more live. Lisa, some sixth graders at Brooklyn Middle School got a visit from the president and first lady. 
after President Biden said he'll invoke the Defense Production Act to make testing kits more available. I will mobilize American industry to produce nearly 300 million more rapid COVID-19 tests for distribution all around the country, including the schools that need them. The president called on governors to require vaccines for all school teachers and staff. Lisa. Thanks, Rachel. Some Republican governors already suggesting possible legal action. The largest union for federal workers has also pushed back, saying changes like this should be negotiated. There are reports of another plane leaving Afghanistan. Al Jazeera describing it as a Qatari Airways jet flying out of Kabul, where the first commercial flight since the U.S. withdrawal happened yesterday. No independent confirmation yet of the flight or who's on it. The Biden administration is pledging to get more people out. The State Department says you look at another airport. They're using every lever they say they have to secure flights from Mazar al-Sharif. That's about 250 miles away from Kabul. That so far has been unsuccessful. More broadly, American officials say they are still working to get more evacuees, including U.S. citizens, out of Afghanistan. And that now means convincing the Taliban. Fox's Rich Edson at the State Department. Yesterday's flight out of Kabul included 10 Americans and 11 legal permanent residents. America is listening to Fox News. If you're suffering from cold, flu, or COVID symptoms, you need an accurate temperature reading as quickly as possible. Fever is the leading symptom of both the flu and COVID-19, so the sooner you rule out the common cold, the better. Then, seek medical advice on whether your fever means it's the flu or the deadlier COVID-19. Accuracy matters, so use the Exergen Temporal Scanner, the same thermometer used by medical professionals millions of times a day in hospitals and clinics to accurately detect fever. Learn more at exergen.com. Warner Brothers Pictures presents Cry Macho, a story of being lost and found as Clint Eastwood returns as Mike Milo, a one-time rodeo star who then takes a job from an ex-boss to bring the man's young son home from Mexico. The unlikely pair face a challenging journey. The only road home is through redemption. Now you'll be able to see it in theaters and on HBO Max for 31 days. September the 17th, it's rated PG-13, may be inappropriate for kids under 13. Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says more money is needed for 9-11 survivors and first responders. The number of people sick and dying has greatly increased. And the cost of medical care, which we don't want to skimp on for one nickel, greatly increased. He plans to add the funding to a reconciliation bill, the spending plan that includes the president's economic agenda. A former associate of former Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani agrees to plead guilty in a campaign finance case. Prosecutors say Igor Fruman is one of two men who tried to collect damaging information about then-candidate Joe Biden ahead of the 2020 election. The campaign finance case is separate. Giuliani has not been charged. Russia may be accusing the U.S. of election interference. Russian news agencies are reporting that U.S. Ambassador John Sullivan has been summoned over allegations of interference. No details given, but Russia has a parliamentary election next week. However, there's also been reporting Sullivan was summoned over Russian reporters being denied credentials to attend 9-11 ceremonies tomorrow. A tennis star could make history tonight. Unless you were born in the early 1960s or before, there's no recollection of having seen a male tennis player win each of the four Grand Slam tournaments the same year. But this could change. With two more match wins, Novak Djokovic would become the third man ever and first since Rod Laver in 1969 to complete a calendar Grand Slam. Tonight, the 34-year-old Serbian, who's gone 26-0 in Grand Slam matches this year, faces Alexander Zverev in the U.S. Open semifinals. Djokovic lost to Zverev in the semifinals at the Olympics. If Djokovic wins tonight, he might lure some NFL fans to switch from football to tennis on Sunday when he would be in line to win his 21st Grand Slam singles title. That would break a tie with Roger Federer and Rafael Nadal for the most in men's tennis. Jared Max, Fox News. A losing streak on Wall Street right now. The Dow's down 88 points. I'm Lisa Brady. This is Fox News. I'm Stuart Varney and this is the Fox Business Report. Stocks opened higher and turned mixed. Investors are looking at the hottest reading on wholesale inflation since at least 2010. Over the year ending in August, the producer price index rose at an 8.3% pace. The monthly increase was stronger than expected, seven-tenths of a percent.
Bank of America is shaking up its top leadership and adding three women to senior positions. Two executives have already retired and others are about to retire or move into other roles. Flooring and carpet company Interface is restructuring and will close a manufacturing plant in Thailand. And Harvard University says it no longer has any direct investments in fossil fuel exploration or development companies and will not invest in them in the future. That's your Fox Business Report. I'm Ginny Costelda, invested in you. Guys, Untuck It agrees it's finally time. Time to update our closets with new clothes we actually want to wear. Time to think about going back to the office or choosing a new way to work. Time to enjoy the best of fall, like long walks in the park and hot coffee on a brisk day. And that means it's time to look sharp and feel comfortable all day with Untuck It. Shirts designed to be worn, Untuck. Discover the perfect fitting shirt today at UntuckIt.com. Use promo code TIME for 20% off your first purchase at UntuckIt.com. Thanks for listening to KHTS AM 1220, Canyon Country, California, K260CO 98.1 FM, Santa Clarita, California. No words can describe the power of belonging to a group of close friends or being part of a family. Insight Treatment Center was founded more than 20 years ago to give teenagers a community of friends and family as they overcome issues like depression, anxiety, and trauma. The new Santa Clarita location is a COVID-secure environment where distance and good airflow are a priority. As a leader in providing intensive outpatient treatment to teenagers, Insight Treatment Center in Santa Clarita is here to help. Call 888-295-9995 or go online to insighttreatment.com. Join the Guardians SCV and KHTS Radio to remember those who lost their lives on 9-11. This 20-year anniversary remembrance event will take place at Higher Vision Church on the Old Road in Valencia starting on Saturday morning at 8 a.m. For more information, visit guardianscv.org. Hey, bargain shoppers. Did you know that there's a brand new grocery outlet in your area? At the new grocery outlet in Santa Clarita, you can cut your grocery bill in half with their otherworldly deals on brand name items. Find amazing deals on fresh produce, meat, dairy, and wine. These are actual everyday savings on the name brand groceries you know and love. It's no wonder all customers end up feeling such bliss at Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Now open on Plum Canyon Road near the Starbucks. See you there. Grocery Outlet Bargain Market. Hey, this is Kyle with your hometown station weather. It's mostly sunny skies here in Santa Clarita. Looking like highs in the 90s today, overnight lows in the 70s. Overall, nice day here in the Santa Cruz Valley. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. The following is sponsored programming and does not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of KHTS or its ownership. Welcome back. You are listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. I am Matt Watson, your host, and you're listening to SCVI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. You know, we're coming to you live from downtown Awesome Town, but, uh, you know, don't let the moniker fool you. Not everything in Awesome Town is peachy all the time. Sometimes, you know, you find yourself in a situation where you need a little bit of a hand. Well, my next guest works for an amazing organization that has been helping Santa Clarita families out for decades now. Joining me now is Leah Parker. Leah is an outreach and domestic violence specialist at the Child and Family Center of Santa Clarita. Previously, Leah was all an outreach specialist at the Zonta Club of Santa Clarita, so she's working hard to make sure that uh, the ladies here in Santa Clarita Valley have everything that they need, families have everything that they need. Leah studied human services with a concentration on addiction at the University of Phoenix, and we're so glad to have her this morning. Leah, welcome to Eye on the Valley. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. It is our pleasure. You know, your organization and, and the work that you all do is, is very near and dear to our heart. So we're, we're, we're grateful and, and we will remain so for everything that you guys do. But for my listeners that aren't as familiar with your guys' services, can you tell us a little bit about the center, kind of in a nutshell? Who do you serve and, and what services do you provide? Yeah, of course. So Child and Family Center has really been providing services to Santa Clarita for about 45 years now. You know, our mission is really strengthening families today for a stronger community tomorrow. We are all about changing lives, 
healing relationships and helping people thrive. Um, really, we found that the best way for us to do that is through three main focuses. So we have three main programs. Um, we focus on mental health services, um, alcohol and drug treatment program, and then we also have our domestic violence program and shelter as well. Um, through that, we are able to serve really children all the way from infancy all the way up to adulthood. Um, we really focus on family-focused care and really creating this whole wraparound idea of supporting families. Um, our mental health services and our substance use program are for Medi-Cal and Medi-Cal eligible um, people in our community. And then our domestic violence program is really free and available to all because we want that safety to be accessible to everyone who walks through our doors that are in need of that, those services. Um, you know, our domestic violence program is actually fairly new to the Child and Family Center. We merged uh, with them in 2018. So it was a great way for us to provide the opportunity for Child and Family Center as long as with um, what was formerly known as the Domestic Violence Center of Santa Clarita to really provide this umbrella type service to the community. So really we are very family focused and we promote wellness through everything that we do and just realizing that communities, healthy communities really is founded by what we do in the families and how we help those families succeed and thrive. And that's a little bit about what we do. And, you know, you mentioned the kind of the marriage between your, your two, what used to be two organizations it really was mm -hmm. kind of the perfect, uh, uh, merger because like you said it's oftentimes it requires these wraparound services rather than determining should we be here should we be there so when we talk yeah. about um, domestic violence services I know oftentimes I know I think this way and, and so there's got to be others out mm -hmm. there that think the same that it, it's a a, a temporary short-term kind of thing somewhere where I can go if I'm in immediate danger so the, the services that you provide, are they just the short-term services or is there long-term care? Is there kind of a transition mm -hmm. plan that you guys work with families on? Yeah, so we have, um, we kind of provide both. We have short-time crisis assistance through our 30-day emergency shelter. And then also what we do is we have an outreach center, which is located on um, Center Point Parkway where the Child and Family Center is is held and where it stands. Um, so here we're able to provide that ongoing case management, um, help with restraining orders, uh, mm. court accompaniment. Um, we have a DV education class that we provide that just provides um, survivors of domestic violence to be able to learn what did I just go through? Like all the emotions that are attached to it, how do I help my children process what's happening? So we have parenting classes available. Um, and just so much education that comes through here. So we're not only able to help in the moment. So I know we also get called out to the hospitals a lot. So mm. if the emergency room has someone come in that says, yeah, I am a survivor of domestic violence. I need someone to talk to. We're able to kind of pick up and, and go there and meet with that person, meet with that survivor and see if, you know, do we help them get into shelter or do they just need an intake? Like, we, we go where the need is, and so we're there in the crisis, but then we're also available to provide that ongoing support. You know, we've helped clients for years, um, and we've had clients that have just continued to, to be part of our program because that ongoing support is what helps them stay grounded. And sometimes they go through the education piece a couple times just because they, they want to keep it fresh in their mind to make sure that they're staying in the healthiest relationships possible. Yeah, definitely. I love that. It's 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 not just a, a path away from the violence, mm -hmm. but then a path moving forward. So that that is so exactly. important. So you mentioned, you know, in the case that maybe um, something somebody says something, or maybe a doctor or nurse notices something at the hospital. Um, but other than that, how do your families find you? Is it based on referral and word of mouth only? How do how do your clients uh, get in contact with you? Yeah, it's a little bit of both. You know, we are very active in the community. You know, before COVID kind of put a pause on a lot of outreach opportunities, we were very active at community roundtables. Schools know where we are. Um, I know our mental health program is very involved in school-based therapeutic services as well. So we have some connection there. So families learn about us through referrals through schools, hospitals, uh, social workers, 
may also refer them to our program. Um, other than that, you know, we, we have a main phone number that, you know, I can provide as well as, you know, office hours. But a lot of times it's just kind of through word of mouth and getting our our name out there, you know, yeah. getting us, out there to for families to know, you know, Child and Family Center is a place I can go for safety, is a place I can go for support. And without a doubt, like there's no second guessing. Like people instantly think, ah, oh, you have a you have a need, Child and Family Center can meet it. Or if they can't, they know where you can. And so we definitely want to be that one stop shop for everything that a family could need. And if we're not able to provide it, then we know of a place that can. And that's the the amazing work of all of our team members here to make those connections. But um, the main way for callers to get involved is to give our office a call, and that number is uh, 661-259-9439 for our main office number. And then our uh, 24-hour emergency domestic violence hotline, this is an amazing number to just keep on hand, and it's really easy to remember. It's 661-259-HELP. And that's 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Anybody can call that number and get linked into services for domestic violence or any other need that they may need in a pinch. Thank you so much for sharing those phone numbers. And Leah, I really appreciate the way you've kind of framed the way our community should think of the Child and Family Center. Um, I, I know, gosh, about five or six years ago, uh, my family and I, were we were really struggling with something. And it was something mm -hmm. that... Uh, that I hadn't dealt with, I didn't have any background in, and kind of didn't know where to go. And, you know, it was one of those moments where I kind of slumped down on the couch and thought, gosh, where does a parent go when they don't know what to yeah. do? And, and boom, that's when it popped in my head. The Child and Family Center can at least get me pointed in the right direction. And that's exactly what happened. I spoke with one of your counselors. They offered a tremendous amount of support, but then said, Matt, go here, go to your healthcare provider. They're going to help you get set up and, and got me pointed in the right direction and got me started. Um, and it was a very brief, uh, uh, period of contact, but mm -hmm. they, they set me off my, my family and I off onto the path of, of recovery. It was great. Now, Leah, you mentioned the pandemic, um, and how mm -hmm. that shifted a little bit of what you guys were able to do. The pandemic has been so hard on everyone, and we've heard a lot of yeah. anecdotal evidence of increased incidences of addiction and substance abuse, mm -hmm. as well as domestic violence. But I haven't seen any numbers on it, and I don't know that we've even finished gathering the numbers as we're still not out of the pandemic. Have yeah. You, have you guys seen an uptick at, at the center there? Is this something that, that is a real struggle? Yeah, we definitely did see an uptick across all of our programs, especially um, I know for, you know, I can speak specifically to the domestic violence program just as I was on site um, during that time where, you know, we were hearing from the police station that they were getting almost a 50, over 50 percent uptick in the amount of domestic violence related calls that they were getting. But on the flip side, our hotline was seeing a decrease in calls. So what we oh. were noticing is that people were reaching out in crisis, but then not knowing and or not feeling safe enough to reach out to the ongoing support because now they're quarantined with the person that's right. harming them. And so I just know from that side of things, we saw a decrease in calls, but yet we were still seeing an increase in need. And then once stuff really started opening up again, our phones were ringing off the hook almost. Mm. You know, we were just seeing more calls and increase for legal assistance specifically. We saw a lot of that because the courts shut down yeah. for a while too, the courthouses. So it was just the minute things started opening up and people started feeling safe enough to reach out, we definitely noticed they were reaching out. And I can say that for probably about all of our programs, for our substance use program, again, um, you know, substance use during the pandemic shot up immensely. And so we had a lot more intakes. And then mental health, especially with the young, young people, you know, with anxiety of doing school online, mm -hmm. you know, yep. being disconnected from their friends, we saw a lot of increase in anxiety and depression in our mental health staff were really seeing a, a big jump in the amount of intake calls that we were getting for, for young people specifically um, in terms of, you know, my child is struggling and they don't know what they're feeling. They, they're angry, they're upset, they're sad, they're scared, and they need that support. So 
definitely across the board we did see that, but the amazing thing about it is that they, they were calling. You know, even if it was decreased at the beginning when things, when people started feeling safe enough to reach out, mm-hmm. they came to us. And we were so grateful for that, that we didn't lose that rapport with them because we were disconnected. Yeah, it, it's kind of that, that, that give and take, right? It breaks my heart to, yeah. s- to hear about the level of, of increase and, and crises. But at the same time, it warms my heart to know that you guys are there to, to mm-hmm. serve our families. You know, this can be... I don't have to tell you, Leah, such <laughs> such tough work, right? It can be stressful and yeah. taxing on, on folks like yourself. How did you decide to get into this line of work? What attracted you to uh, to provide these kinds of services for our community? Yeah, you know, I've always had a heart just to help people. Mm. And, um, you know, going to college with, uh, with the University of Phoenix, I had to do this field experience work. Okay. And looked up organizations in town and got plugged in with um, what was formerly known as the Domestic Violence Center of Santa Clarita and just fell in love with the work that they were doing. And then when we merged with Child and Family Center, now being able to create, like we were talking about earlier, that wraparound care, it just it fell right in line with my passion of how do we help families thrive? How do we help, at least for myself, you know, young women specifically, young teens, you know, how do we help them create healthy relationships and connections. And so the work that we do here with Child and Family Center, no matter how taxing it may be, it's almost so rewarding. You know, when you get to see, I'll never forget working with the domestic violence program early on, you know, a client that I had spoken to in the hospital emergency room walked in through our doors, I want to say almost a year, maybe a year and a half later, asking for clothes for a job interview that she was having. And she saw me and she just burst into tears and just saying, I remember you I remember you coming and talking to me. You're the reason why I'm able to get this job today. And that was just that's the pull that keeps you founded in your work even during the most taxing times such as a pandemic because you know you're the one person that could be the lifeline for the person to thrive and be empowered and reach their goals later on in life and that's something that you know you just you can't you can't let go of, and right. it keeps you going forward. Comments like that, yeah, they may be few and far between, but they certainly fill your bucket, don't they? They do. Now, um, I believe that uh, you guys at the Child and Family Center receive county reimbursement for mm-hmm. some of the services you provide. You mentioned Medi-Cal, Medicare, but you also mentioned that a lot of the domestic, not a lot, all of the domestic violence services <laughs> you provide are free of charge. So you guys rely quite a bit on charitable donations. But again, yes. this pandemic has been tough, right? You've had events mm-hmm. that, that have been canceled and shut down and, and, and things like that. So how has that affected your ability to, to sustain services these last couple of years? Yeah, um, the pandemic definitely definitely hit our agency hard. I, again, I can speak to the domestic violence program side of it where we we have seen quite a, a decrease in the amount of funding we, we receive through grants and, and things like that just because, again, um, client services numbers dropped because people were not safe to come in. You know, um, things were being done virtually. You know, they're uh, isolated with their batteries, so they weren't – seeing us in person and reaching out for services. So we definitely saw an, an extreme decrease in the amount of funding that we've seen. Um, and it's really caused us to have to adjust some of the ways that we've, we've worked in, in our program. But, Matt, to tell you the truth, even though we've seen a decrease on that funding, we've seen such a generosity from our community. Um, uh-huh. We hosted our Hearts for Heroes giving campaign recently, and I I believe we had another kind of giving campaign towards the beginning of the pandemic, too. And just the outpouring of love and financial support and even material support, the amount of donations we received during COVID in the terms of clothing and food was just absolutely amazing, even from... You know, some of our partners, like Jersey Mike's, was offering sandwiches to our clients. So they were doing box lunches. So even though we were struggling maybe on the grant side, we were not struggling on the side of community. And that's one thing that I love about Santa Clarita is that they are just so generous to give to really what touches and pulls on their heartstrings and is close to their heart and their families. And so, yeah, we were hit hard, but we we definitely were encouraged and um, just felt so loved by the community through the support that we've seen throughout the, I guess, the last year and a half almost. 
Yeah, you're absolutely right. We live in such a generous community. And if you're feeling generous and want to make a donation, uh, or if you are in need of services, you can reach out to the Child and Family Center at www.childfamilycenter.org. Or like Leah mentioned before, you can give them a call at 259-9439. If you're in immediate danger, very simple to remember the number, 259-HELP. Now, we're talking with Leah Parker, Outreach and Domestic Violence Specialist at the Child and Family Center of Santa Clarita. They do have a couple of events coming up that you can also get involved in to help support the center and also have a lot of fun with your friends. We'll talk about that when we come back, so stick around. You're listening to SCVI and I Lead Schools, Eye on the Valley. I'm your host, Matt Watson, on your hometown station, KHTS. When you look at your child, you see so much. A creative spirit that surprises you every day. A little leader growing to discover who they are, what they love, and how they can make the world better. At SCVI, we see those same amazing things. Our tuition-free TK-12 through charter school provides boundless opportunities to think critically and imagine freely with a learning program customized just for your child. Today, that means empowering your child to bring strengths and passions to the distance learning environment. Our approach keeps your child and family in step while online, inspiring your learner to keep growing without missing a beat. At SCVI, your child will find even more ways to grow with projects and activities in STEAM, robotics, theater, music, and sports. With the only international baccalaureate program in Santa Clarita, SCVI produces graduates who excel at top universities and in life. For enrollment information or to learn more about our distance learning program, visit iLeadSantaClarita.org. iLead Schools, free to think, inspired to lead. Once heart attack symptoms begin, delaying treatment increases the risk of heart damage, disability, and even death. Time is critical. Leading the valley with the most advanced digital technology and treatment times that beat national best practice goals, Providence offers emergency coronary angioplasty and stenting performed by highly trained board certified cardiologists. For more information, call 1-888-HEALING. The road to healing leads to Providence. It's time to enhance your natural beauty and well-being at Hestia Medical Spa. Feel as good as you look with services that include body sculpting, using the most up-to-date technology, including high-intensity focused ultrasound. Choose from a long menu of services like IV therapy, which is a great energy booster, combats dehydration, boosts your immune system, and conquers hangovers. Experience rejuvenation at Hestia Medical Spa, located on Valencia Boulevard next to City Hall. Call 753-3434 or go online at HestiaMedicalSpa.com. Accidents happen, but rest assured Patterson's Collision Center is here to help. Patterson's is a family-owned and operated collision repair facility providing the Santa Clarita Valley with premium collision repairs. Patterson's prides itself on being the only California certified green repair shop in all of Santa Clarita. They are insurance claim specialists and even offer payment plans for your deductible. For personalized, friendly service, visit PattersonsCollisionCenter.com or call 294-1011 and let Patterson's Collision Center help ease your worries today. Save water and save money. SCV Water wants to help you find your fit and take advantage of conservation rebate programs that will help you save. Water your landscape more efficiently. Replace your lawn with water-wise plants. Conduct free in-home water surveys. Cover your swimming pool and more. Find the programs that fit your needs and start saving today. Visit conserve.yourscvwater.com to learn more. That's conserve.yourscvwater.com. Your hometown station. KHTS is the only station I listen to. 98.1 FM and AM 1220. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station. 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCVI and I lead schools Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. How you doing? We are talking this morning to Outreach and Domestic Violence Specialist at the Child and Family Center of Santa Clarita, Leah Parker. 
Leah, before the break, we were talking about all the different services that the Child and Family uh, Center provides, and, and you refer to them as wraparound services, things that often, oftentimes go hand in hand, right? Uh, mental health mm-hmm. issues, addiction, domestic violence, and you know, to fund all these services, you guys rely on the generosity of the community and, and also some pretty cool fundraising events. So you've got one coming up. Can you tell me about Purple Palooza? What is Purple Palooza? Oh, Purple Palooza is so fun, Matt. It is a 5K color walk to end domestic violence. So October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month, and the event happens Um, During that month this year, it's on the 16th, we're hosting it here at Child and Family Center. It is just a fun and super colorful way for families and our community members to come together and just raise awareness of domestic violence to, you know, as we walk through the city covered in purple dust, I mean, that's the selling point right there, (laughs) is, you know, just to learn about domestic violence, show survivors that they're not alone. Mm -hmm. Um, Domestic violence is a very isolating experience and when they see people walk around the town colored and covered in purple holding signs walking in memory of of loved ones you know we have statistics all around the route you know they're learning about it they're breaking down that taboo that it's you know to you know you don't talk about it type of a thing we're bringing it out in the open and it's just a great way for you know parents to engage their children in the topic and and, and talk to them about what does a healthy relationship look to you? Mm. You know, it's engaging these healthy conversations that really promote healthy relationships later on. And, you know, our domestic violence program has been doing Purple Palooza for years. Um, It's formerly known as the Purple Walk of Strength. But um, this year we wanted to make it really family-oriented, so we changed the name to Purple Palooza, but everything about it stays the same. We're going to have, you know, food. We're going to have live music, uh, fun, you know, awareness activities for people to do, you know, face painting, a selfie station. So we are just going above and beyond this year to really, you know, bring awareness to this very important issue, and it's it's just going to be a super fun time. I love that, that uh, it's so multifaceted, right? You're obviously raising funds for, mm-hmm. for the center to fund the, the domestic violence services that you provide, but also yeah. a way of, of saying to victims, hey, we've got you. It's okay. Let's talk about mm-hmm. this. Let's, uh, let's support each other. And then also the, the prevention side. It's a way of families getting together and saying, this is a thing, but it doesn't have to be. Let's talk about what a healthy relationship is. I love that. I absolutely love that. So you're talking about a full family experience. This isn't something that's, that's taboo or something that, uh, that would only be for ages 16 and up. This is something that we can bring the littles out and, and, and have a good oh, time. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. This is for all ages. You know, bring your pets. I know my dog is going to be walking with me. Uh, You know, it is just a great opportunity for the whole family to get involved. You know, we've been cooped up in our houses for about a year now. This is a great opportunity for, you know, us to kind of stretch our legs for an important cause, too. So it's it's pretty great. And like you said, um, all the money, all the proceeds, all the, the fundraising comes back into the program that's really saving lives. Yeah. Um, and, and that's the most important piece about it is, you know, we're encouraging people to create teams um, and, and really fundraise as a family, fundraise as, you know, an organization, as a small business, you know, as KHTS, you know, all of that stuff, you know, creating teams and really fundraising to bring in as much money as possible because, like we said, um, you know, we're – we're basically driven by the community. You know, a lot of what we do is funded through these fundraisers. And, you know, in order to keep our services free of cost and available to everyone, these fundraisers are key. And so we're looking for families, organizations to create these teams, fundraise, and bring in more money. And, you know, we've got some great prizes Mm. and little perks to give away as you uh, fundraise and bring in those monies too. So you're definitely, um, we are thanking you as well through through all of your giving that is so cool and like you mentioned what a great way kind of uh, as we head into the post-pandemic era to to get out of the house and and stretch your legs Mm -hmm. dress up in your your purple garb you said you guys are blasting purple dust on people and and things like that oh yes 
Yes, my cubicle is filled of about 100 pounds worth of uh, <laughs> purple dust, so we are set and ready to go. <laughs> oh, that is so awesome. <laughs> I, I love that. So, all right, I know Patty has already got his team together, and, and he's getting it all set up. So how nice. can people sign up for Purple Palooza? Yeah, so they can actually visit our website at childandfamilycenter.com, or sorry, .org, and what they can do is they're going to scroll down and they'll see a, a link for Purple Palooza. There you're able to, it'll take you straight to the run website. You sign up real simple and easy and you can create your team. Uh, you can create a great little website that, you know, friends and families can go to and kind of see why you're walking and, you know, become a team member. Or just even simply donate to the walk. We have different ways people can join. Um, we're even offering, I know, a lot of people you know, still may not feel comfortable being part of a large event, and that's okay. So we have a virtual option available as well, too, for those who would prefer to walk, you know, within the safety of their neighborhood. We don't want anyone to feel like they can't participate. And so we have that, you know, kids, we have a kid's price of $15. The virtual walk is 25 you know, the basic walker's bag is only $35, and then the deluxe registration that comes with the Purple Walk T-shirt and the medal is $60. So it's a very reasonable price for a super fun event. Definitely. Very reasonable indeed, and, and, and get that uh, that deluxe pack. That, that'd be terrific. Um, now, Producer Sarah did drop the link to your website on our Facebook Live feed for those of you that are listening on Facebook Live. Um, an interesting nuance about your website is um, you guys leave out the and. So it is childfamilycenter.org. Um, and then, yeah, just scroll down to the bottom. You can't miss the link there for Purple Palooza. you got to get signed up. Now, Leah, I want to talk to you about another event that you've got coming up. Actually, mm -hmm. even sooner than that, because Purple Palooza is in mid-October, right? October is Domestic Violence Awareness yeah, Month. Yeah, October 16th. But you've got an event before that called Voices of Recovery. Um, maybe a little bit um, uh, more somber of an event, but no less important. Can you talk to us about Voices of Recovery? What is that? Yeah, so Voices of Recovery is happening Wednesday, September 29th here, uh, not here at the center, but it is virtual. Oh, cool. um, what it is is September is actually National Recovery Month, and it's a time to really celebrate the recovery journeys of so many people in our community. You know, everything from recovery from addiction, recovery from mental health, recovery from, you know, any kind of life experience. You know, the theme of this year is recovery is for everyone. You know, recovery involves the family. So this time, uh, the discussion is going to include those in recovery, you know, as they share how their journey has affected not only themselves, but also those around them. You know, what role do we play as a community in our family members' recovery, in our neighbors' recovery? You know, how can we be a support to them? Um, we're going to be having a professional panel as well as um, – as a recovery panel, you know, those who have gone through our program to share, you know, what helped them along their way from their community, you know, to kind of share their story and then also hear from a professional panel of, you know, from more of a clinical side, how do we support? You know, what does it look like? What does recovery look like? Um, a lot of people may even avoid recovery because they don't have a clear picture on understanding what it looks like. Yeah. And so we want to kind of debunk all those myths and, and misconceptions so that way people can really feel like, you know what, you're right, it, it is time. And, you know, child and family is there and we can do that. So it's a Zoom meeting, we, again, that's accessible through our website, and it's from 6 to 7 on Wednesday, September 29th. But, you know, yes, it's a little bit more somber. It's not a, a 5K walk, but it's still just as important, and it's still just as impactful, and we really hope um, the community can come and be a part of that as well. Absolutely. That, that kind of conversation um, is so important. Kind of on both ends, um, because mm -hmm. oftentimes when, when folks are going through addiction, uh, a hard part about reaching out to someone else is, ah, why am I going to talk to you? You don't understand. Well, these are voices mm -hmm. that understand because they've been through what you're going through. And then on the other end, oftentimes those in recovery, those that ha are, are uh, kind of on the, the other side of that hill, if you will, um, find sustaining their recovery is um, helped by sharing your story, 
right? I know oftentimes mm-hmm. that folks um, use that, kind of lean on that to, to help support themselves by supporting others. I, I, I'm not saying it very well, but does that make sense that, uh, that no, that's an important part of the recovery? No, it absolutely does. Yeah, and there's a statement that I usually share as I'm speaking out to the community is that, you know, serious issues, mental health issues, um, substance use struggles, they thrive in silence, Mm. right? In domestic violence, they thrive in silence. So the more that we're vocal about it, the more that we talk about it, the more that we share our stories, um, you know, the less likely we are to see that, that cycle continue into the next generation. And so that's the hope of this recovery, um, Voices of Recovery Night in this event is, you know, there is strength in my story. There is strength in my experience. Even at, you know, when I was at rock bottom, there is strength in that moment. And so that's what we want to encourage through this night is, you know, it really is a time of celebration. And that's why it's not called, you know, National Substance Use Awareness Month. It's Recovery Month because we're celebrating the journeys that people are taking out of addiction and into recovery. And that's what I love that it's called Voices of Recovery because it really is about the story of each individual that has gone through our program and that is helping with our program. And really, stories is what really pulls people in. Yeah. And so we're very excited to share that with everyone. Well, and I love that you guys are doing it on Zoom because oftentimes this first step can be the hardest. And so Mm -hmm. it allows somebody to... Uh, from their own home, it's not a huge step that you have to take. Just, just dial into the Zoom and 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 listen, and then maybe you'll be encouraged to ask that question or to reach out and take that second step. So one more time, Leah, how can folks get connected with Voices of Recovery or any of the other services at your center? Yeah, anyone interested in our services can reach us um, at six six one two five nine nine four three nine. Or they can also find out more about our programs at our website, which is childfamilycenter.org. Leah, you guys are doing amazing work, and we're so grateful for it. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And you and I talked about it with Patty um, off the air during the commercial, and I just wanted to throw it out there for you. See? Hawks! <laughs> All right, there you go. It is football season, folks. When we get back, it is time for a little bit more fun and frivolity with Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. And it looks like that special guest that I was referring to at the beginning of the show has arrived. So we'll take a break, bring him in, and get this party started. This is SCBI and I Lead School's Eye on the Valley. I'm your host, Matt Watson. We'll be right back on your hometown station, KHTS. Youth Workshops return to the Canyon Theater Guild. Join us on Tuesdays and Thursdays starting September 7th for 10 weeks of teamwork and fun while creating theater magic. Our day class from 1230 to 330 will create the fun pixelated world of video games with Press Start, while our after school class from 4 to 6 embarks on a swashbuckling adventure with Space Pirates. Class size is limited, so register today at 661-799-2702 or visit canyontheater.org. KHTS strives to give the Santa Clarita Valley all the information they need. And when our computers aren't working the way they should, we call Resurgence, your true source for IT. Resurgence provides outstanding customer service while also providing the highest technical ability. They strive to do what's best to improve and protect your business. For more information on Resurgence, call 349-4114 or visit resurgenceit.com. Summer is here. Why not cool off with a new Dunkin' Refresher? Choose from lemonade, green tea, or coconut milk with strawberry, peach, or blueberry flavor. Limited time offer, only $3 for a medium-sized drink. Dunkin' also has new all-day sandwiches and new donut varieties. Order ahead with the Dunkin' app and accumulate points. Located on Bouquet Canyon in the Lowe Shopping Center and on Sierra Highway in Canyon Country. Both with curbside pickup, Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, and Postmates. Or use the drive through at Sierra Highway. Santa Clarita runs on Duncan. Excellence isn't just a word, it is what we deliver. Vanguard Protection Group is committed to providing its clients with the highest echelon of protective services available. Our clients not only receive the security services they contract for, but also reports that are well-written, articulate, and thorough. Our patrol officers operate at the highest levels and have an impressive rapport with local law enforcement. With military, police, private policing, and courtroom experience, you can trust that we have the strength to deliver our promise of excellence. Contact Vanguard Protection by calling 661-753-3611 or visiting their website at vanguardprotectiongroup.com. A Royal 
The Royal Suite Home Furnishings has been family owned and operated in Santa Clarita since 1978. They keep America working by stocking heritage quality furniture made right here in the USA. With high-end design and thousands of fabrics to choose from, a Royal Suite offers a wide selection of furniture at incredibly low prices. Pay 0% interest with your approved credit for 12, 24, 36, or 48 months. See store for details. Visit a Royal Suite's massive showroom on Carl Boyer Drive near Sam's Club in Santa Clarita. A Royal Suite. Sweet dreams. Your hometown station, KHTS. Welcome back. You're listening to KHTS, your hometown station, 98.1 FM and 1220 AM. This is SCBI and I lead School's Eye on the Valley. I am your host, Matt Watson. And joining us now in studio for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame is a man who's lived in Santa Clarita even longer than Big T. He's been selling real estate for over 28 years and has helped thousands of families get into that beautiful new home. He is co-owner of the Realty Executive's Office, known as Reex Valencia. Well, then you need to update your website, Phil. It is Phil Nordella. I stole this information straight from your I, website. I know this is radio, but I'm shaking my head going, no, 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 right. no, no, no. Okay, no. so... I used to own... Realty executives. I used to Uh-oh. be a co-owner at Realty Executives. I left there in 2018 well, to go to... on my own. I sold my, my my shares of that to my partner. Hmm. Okay, okay, so I was on, like, what was it? PhilNordella.com? PhilNordella.com. Like and if you read it really carefully, it's not going to say what you just said. But it's fine. It's okay. fine. And, I, and you, know, okay. you know what? Just for the fact that you actually looked at that website, that's awesome. Hey. Thank you so much. I'm an English teacher, but I'm not much of a reader. <laughs> you know what? You were right on the fact I've done 28 years. All I used right. to own the, part of the Realty Executives, and, and that was fun. And now I'm with a company called EXP. All right. Yes. EXP. Okay. EXP. Fantastic. Awesome. I misread the site. Sorry about that. No, not a problem. But it is time for Big T's Five Minutes of Fame. And you all know Big T. Phil knows Big T. He listens Every week. Big T every week. Just like mom. Big T is a longtime resident and leader in the Santa Clarita Valley, just not as long as Phil. <laughs> Big T is an executive and philanthropist, just not as successful as Phil. <laughs> He's an amazing father and husband and community leader. Phil, what have you got? Is, is your wife going to vouch for you? I got nothing. Oh, man. <laughs> well, here he is, mom's favorite, Big T. Welcome to the show. Wait a minute, I'm kind of taking it to the shops here already. <laughs> As it should be. Well, i got to deflect. I'm the one that misread the website. <laughs> All right, Phil. You, so, were, you were never good at following directions. <laughs> right, right. Um, so, okay, Phil, you've listened. You know. Um, yes. We do have our buzzers. Yes. Your buzzer is going to be your name. Yep. And so we've got Phil, Patty, and Frogger. Okay, can I make it my, my, my new grandson's name, Koa? You want to go with Koa? Can I go with Koa? Aw, okay. that's adorable. Yeah. Nice? yeah. Nice? yeah. All right. Yeah. Awesome. So we're going to go with Koa, and congratulations on the grandson. Can I make a suggestion, though? I've been listening forever, okay? He's it's, storming it's, the castle, T. It's a great, great, sh- it's a great thing. I love this. All right. Right? Yeah. But that whole idea of saying true or false, true. <laughs> a frogger, true. Okay, that, that needs to have some kind of, that needs to change, okay? So this is what I suggest. It's okay if you buzz in before you hear the question. But if you get that one wrong, you'll lose a point. Oh, oh drop oh, the mic. Oh, oh. I'm gonna what lose. do you say to that? I, that I, way that way you have to listen to the question. I, I'm gonna have to defer <laughs> to the host. What do you think, Big T? <laughs> nah. I, I think we keep I think we keep it the way it is, and I'm sure Matt can probably explain a little bit off the air, but uh, it just adds a little bit of levity to it. So if you're if you're getting your pants beat because you didn't know geography you at least got a 50-50 shot at the true fault. <laughs> okay, right. you know what? That'll help me because I don't know any of these <laughs> Me neither. None of them. All right, so fair enough. Hands on your buzzers, friends. Those right. of you at home, you don't need to buzz in. You just shout out the answer and let the dog wonder what, the, what in the world you're doing. <laughs> All right, Big T, let's do this. Oh, boy. Hey, I want to I kick it off with a little bit of a fun fact this morning, Maddie. So All right. did you know that, so- that soccer fields actually tipped off U.S. intelligence to the missiles that were in Cuba during the Cuban Missile Crisis? Yeah. Tony, I did hear true. this recently. Yeah, yeah, oh, it sorry. Is have true. we? Have we? Have we no, sorry, I thought we'd have started. <laughs> no, yes. uh, they saw some aerial photos and realized, wait a minute, Cubans play baseball, Russians play soccer. Right? Uh, <laughs> hey, to US it, it's a true story, not that sophisticated, but yeah. That's funny. All right. We're true. All right. 
By combining the Greek words for love and brotherly, William Frogger. Penn named what U.S. city? Frogger. Frogger. Philadelphia. Oh. Philadelphia is correct. <laughs> what okay, I'm leaving. Was <laughs> <laughs> what meat was featured in Swanson's first TV dinner? Frogger. Patty. Frogger. Well, we mentioned it earlier. It was the partially burned, partially frozen Salisbury steak, wasn't it? Incorrect. That was not the first TV dinner uh, from Patty. Oh. I think, I think Patty's um, on Koa. Oh, it's it's I, huh? meatloaf. <laughs> Not meatloaf, Patty. You got anything? Chimichanga. Chimichanga. Come on. How about chicken? That's what I would have said. The last one. <laughs> the correct answer is turkey. It was a. It was oh. A oh. I would have still got that wrong. Yes, chimichanga. <laughs> All right. Positive or negative? A proton has what type of charge? Frogger. Patty. Pro Positive. Frogger than Koa. That's pro. Yeah. Positive is correct. Yeah. The U.S. Supreme Court is made up of the Chief Justice and how many Associate Justices? Koa. Koa. <laughs> Chimichanga. <laughs> hey! No, no, no. Hang on a second. Koa, how many four. Chief Justices? Uh, 49. Incorrect. <laughs> Anybody? Frogger. Six. Frogger. Incorrect. Patty. It's 13? <laughs> no. It's actually eight. Eight, yeah. I was close. Uh, <laughs> you're close. It used to be six. 49 Marvel, was close. Marvel trivia. Marvel trivia. Oh, Captain America and Bucky's arm are made of what? Patty. Patty. Vibranium. Vibranium. Vibranium is correct. Oh, my God. Right? <laughs> Jimmy Chunga. What city nicknamed the octopus is the capital of Peru? Frogger. Frogger. Lima? That is correct. But huh. why is it called the octopus? Yeah, what is, what is the correlation the of, there? It's the nickname of that city. I didn't do the research on that. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Big T has a day job. <laughs> <laughs> Until 1954, what New York island served as, the, as an immigrant station? Frogger. Patty. Frogger than Patty. Ellis Island. Yep. Ellis Island is correct. <sighs> I look stupid. Yeah, those true-false questions are sounding pretty appetizing. Uh -huh. <laughs> right Give me a true-false. Give me a true-false. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. In 1921, what French designer released her iconic fragrance number five? Frogger. Oh, shh. Koa. Frogger than Koa. Coco Chanel. Coco Chanel is correct. Oh. I would have said Chanel number five. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> I was close. No, we, we would have given it to you. Oh, nice. True or false? Patty. The population of California. Oh, Patty. <laughs> True. True is correct. The population oh. of California is larger than the entire population of Canada. Hmm. Oh, wow. That's wow. Fascinating. That is fascinating. That right. is interesting, eh? Franklin Roosevelt found what charity with a coin in its name? Frogger. Frogger. March of Dimes. March of Dimes is correct. You're brilliant. VJ Day marked the end of what war? Frogger. Frogger. That'd be World War II. That's correct. Victory oh. over Japan. See, see, I had that one. I'm just not quick. Right. See, you got to have your hand on your buzzer, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Where is my buzzer? In the, <laughs> in the beginning, in the beginning are the first three words of what Frogger. New Testament book? Oh, Frogger. Genesis. That is correct. It's Genesis. It's also, the, uh, it's also the, the only time in the Bible that it talks about baseball. In <laughs> the big inning. Uh, All right, good dad joke. Yeah, right? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Appointed by Ronald Reagan, who was the first female Supreme Court justice? Frogger. Patty. Frogger Sa than Patty. Sandra Day O'Connor. That is correct. Oh, oh. he's good. What country has the most native Portuguese speakers? Frogger. Portugal. <laughs> no, Brazil. <laughs> Brazil is correct. Huh. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Huh. <laughs> what term describes the distance around the perimeter of a circle? Patty. Um, uh, Koa, dang it. Patty, Patty then Koa. Diameter? Incorrect. The distance it's around the perimeter. The diameter goes to oh. the middle. Oh. That is I mean, right. he was next, so, so he does get it. Yep. yep. Yes. So it's on the board. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> See, Taylor, I'm not that stupid. At <laughs> <laughs> Adjectives modify or describe what class of words? Frogger. Frogger. Nouns or other adjectives? That is correct. That's not fair. He's like a shill. He's from a school <laughs> thing. He's I a mean, teacher. Come on. Come on. Right? <laughs> Sorry. What constitution? What constitution amendment do witnesses plead when when claiming protection of self-incrimination? Koa. Oh yeah. Koa. The fifth. The fifth. 
Hey, fun fact on that one. Frogger has the right to remain silent. Just most of the time, you actually have the ability. I don't, I don't have the ability. Right, right. <laughs> what is the only planet not named after a Roman or Greek god? Frogger. Koa. Patty. Frogger. Earth. And then Koa. Earth is correct. Oh. Hell yeah, huh? Good for you. Huh. Wasn't thinking true, of that. True or false? Patty. True. Presidents have to pay. Oh. <laughs> I got it. Sorry. Sorry. Patty's already in. I, I, no, we'll give it to you. Koa, Koa chimed in first. You know, I'll give it to you. You know, I'll be, I'll I'll be a say sport. Koa. I just said true. I'll be a sport. Now watch. Bet it's not right. No, I'll give, it to, I'll give it to you. Okay, true. True is correct. Yes. The presidents have to pay for their own groceries. Presidents have to pay for their own groceries? Huh. Yes, Get they do. It's out. one of the things they have to pay for. They also have to pay for dry cleaning, huh. vacations. Huh? Interesting. I, I bet Kinda they do like the, the, the drive up Koa. pickup though. Yeah. There's no way they're fixing that. No, yeah, 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 yeah. no way. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. Bradley Cooper is the voice of what Marvel character? Patty. Oh, Patty. I know this. Actually. Rocket Raccoon? <laughs> yeah, that is. Oh, well, I was wrong. Wasn't that a Beatles song? <laughs> I think so. Might have been. Two more, Big T. Argen- Argentina shares a 3,000 mile border with what country? Frogger. Timmy Chunga. Frogger. <laughs> Chile. Sorry. <laughs> Correct. All right. The first, the first rap single to hit the Billboard Top 40 was a smash hit by the Sugar Hill Gang. Frogger. Frogger. Aww. Rapper's Delight. Yeah. Rapper's Delight is yeah. correct. Yeah. I'm old. And I we, don't know that. We don't. Well, so is that song. Oh, is it? Come on. That song yeah. is old. <laughs> yeah, like what, 1981? We were too poor to have a radio. Oh, okay. <laughs> 1979. Oh, wow. Okay, well, Big T, we do have to go, but thanks again for popping by. Phil, thanks so much for being such a good thanks sport. Thanks for and crashing fitness. and burning in the studio. <laughs> you know, hopefully you'll you be got, able to put out the fire. You got three with points. The next show. Hey, it, it, it was a lot of fun, and that's what it's all about. I love There's it. no need to look at the scoreboard. Thank you for letting me come in. Of course. I also thanks want to thank Dr. Well. Armine, uh, Armine uh, Movisician from I Lead Agua Dulce, Leah Parker, from the uh, from the Child and Family Center, real estate mogul Phil Nordella, Big T, producer Sarah, engineer Patty, and thank you for listening. Join us again next week and every Friday, 8 to 10 a.m. I'm Matt Watson, and this is SCBI and I Lead Schools Eye on the Valley on your hometown station, KHTS. KHTS.